Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where I'm going to show you all the steps I took in order to build this nice modern console table that I'm using as a bougie weight storage system in my parents' home gym makeover. For this project, it required three sheets of plywood that I had ripped down to 17 and a half inches wide so that the cabinet would be 19 inches in total depth once finished. You will also need one by threes and one by twos along with wood glue and brad nails for this project. You wanna first remove the baseboard so that the cabinet will sit flush against the wall. Then cut out your side pieces and attach one by twos as supports for the bottom and top shelves. Here I'm showing you that I cut one side at a bevel edge and in hindsight, now that I'm gonna use this as a painting project, I would just cut straight across. For this next step, it would be really helpful to have another set of hands to help put this top board across these two cleats on both side pieces. As you can see, I was on a little bit of a struggle bus here, but I got it done and then used brad nails and wood glue on the two top seams on either side to secure them. Once those were secured, I moved on to the bottom shelf where I cut another piece of plywood that fit from end to end and secured it on the bottom cleats with brad nails. You can see here that there's tons of give in the middle and it's basically hitting the ground here. So I cut some one by twos the same depth of the plywood and secured them with brad nails and wood glue underneath. Since this is gonna be for weight storage in a gym, I definitely don't want that much give in my wood. I used a level just to show me the straight line and secured about four extra supports and then used one and a half inch brad nails and tight bond glued for all of the joints. Once this was all put together, it was a basic box and I tilted it over onto its side to begin face framing. I added wood glue in one by threes and attached them with brad nails across the entire length of the top of the cabinet. You wanna make sure that when you are securing them that the edge of the one by three is completely flush with the top of the cabinet. I then repeated this process on both of the sides and even though these are mitered cuts, I ended up deciding to paint this cabinet so straight cuts would have been just fine and made this a little easier. I then went to add the one by three along the base, keeping it level with the bottom shelf, but the middle was bowing so I needed to skip ahead and add the divider in between. Now that that was in place, I could attach that and keep the box square. And this is the only area that I used actual wood screws because I wanted to make sure that it didn't bow. At this point, I was finally able to finish off the outside face framing. And then I added another board to beef up this middle divider and put a one by three across the top so it looked like a solid piece. Once that was done, I was able to put the structure back up on its legs and then I moved over to the side and added these two pieces of plywood the same way I did for the middle. Then I basically repeated the process on the front, making a face frame out of one by threes and attaching them on all four sides. I used one by threes with wood glue and brad nails once again, and I did find that it was easier just to tip it on its side and let gravity help me out. I then went back to these side pieces that I wanted to attach to the inside parts of the one by three to bulk this up. And I did this over on the right side and then I repeated the process over on the left side. I then stood it back up and moved it into its place just so I can kind of visualize what else needed to be built and decided to add two shelves to this inner part. I put one by twos across the middle of the openings and a piece of plywood and then made it appear bulky by adding a one by three with wood glue and brad nails. Once that was secured, I repeated the process over on the other side so that everything would stay symmetrical. And this is a fairly easy way to add a shelf into any space requiring very little material. Next, I turned my focus over to the top of the cabinet where I had to figure out how to enclose this central vacuum system where it would be completely hidden but still have ventilation for when it's in use. I decided to cut two pieces of plywood that would go on either side and then I added one by twos to the front and back so that I could have a face frame for a door and then have something to secure it to the wall. This is essentially a floating box that will just have a cabinet door on it. 
Now I wanted the two sections on either side of this cabinet to be equal, so I began making pocket holes and created this left side box that will house a fridge. I went over to the box and then added the same one by three face framing so that it blended in with the current structure. And here you can see how I just did straight cuts because now I know that I am going to paint it. So then I decided to go and use Bondo to fill all of the seams. And let me tell you, this stuff has been life-changing in these projects that has two separate parts. You definitely want to wear a mask because this stuff is super smelly. And I normally just get a paper plate and a putty knife and dab some of the mixture onto my plate. And then you're gonna wanna use the cream hardener and put a little line on top of the mixture and you mix very well until it turns kind of this bluish tint. You're gonna want to just spread it out like you're spreading butter across all of the flat seams. And once you get the hang of it, it goes pretty quickly. And this stuff dries super fast, so you wanna make sure you work pretty quickly and in small batches. Once you've finished applying it to the entire structure, you can come back to the other side and it's already dry and ready to be sanded. So I took my orbital sander and I like to go over the seams with a low grit at first, probably like a 60, just to make sure all of the rough edges are knocked off. And then I come through with a 220 and make sure that all of the seams are smooth. Okay, the next step now that this is all built and sanded, I want to figure these out. I'm gonna put like a, a one by two across the top to keep them straight. So I measured out the distance and cut one by twos and made pocket holes to secure at three different spots because I wanna make sure that this cabinet can be removed if needed to access this central back. I quickly realized that I was gonna to need to assemble this up on the cabinet to fit around the central back, so I did that there. And then once those were secure, I made sure that the sides were level and eventually I will make a cabinet door to enclose this. Here you can see these areas that were sanded down and I know they look bad, but trust me, they will disappear once we get paint on these. And the next step is at all of the edges in these corners, I will run a bead of caulk and that will just make it look more seamless and like one unit. So you grab your caulk gun and then I ended up going with the Dynaflex 230. It's for windows, trim, um, and painting projects. And you basically just run a bead and then wipe it with your finger and having baby wipes for this step will make your life way easier. So once that was done, I let those dry and turn my focus over to the door. I wanted to make this out of one by three pine, the same as all my face framing and I added pocket holes in order to attach them together, where you will see shortly that I did this completely backwards. But this is the basic principle. I added one directly in the middle to separate in into two equal sections. And this is the part of the project where you wanna give up. What? Oh my God. I am so stupid. No, we're not. We're just DIYing and we're gonna fix this. <laughs> Yep, we did it backwards. Mm, 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 mm. So after a lot of noises, me checking my watch, scratching my head, deep breathing, we got it together and removed all of the pocket holes. Basically, I needed the longer pieces to go on the inside so that it was taller. So now that I fixed my problem, I moved on and cut a bunch of one by twos so that I could create a slat look in both of these sections and I secured them using only wood glue and repeated the process on the top section. While those were drying, I moved on to adding in the fridge and making sure it fit, which you can see here, obviously it didn't at first. I didn't realize that this portion where the fridge was gonna go needed to not have a base for my measurements. So I took my mini circular saw and cut out the portion underneath the fridge. Once that was out, I took my multi-tool and tried to attempt to keep this bottom piece of molding, but in the end, I ended up taking the entire thing out because it fit better without it. So I finally got the fridge in, 
removed that bottom piece and then decided to push it back into place so that I could finalize where the fridge was going to be. The last piece of this puzzle was getting the fridge put in and adding one by three face framing on the right hand side. This area I am hoping to house a laundry basket. I put my door up just to make sure it fit and then I got a white a base coat of paint throughout the entire structure. I'm gonna let this dry and add another coat and then we will do a fun technique to the top. I then went searching for some leftover paint my mom had in her cupboard and found this so I decided to go along with it. The color was from Sherwin-Williams Cancun Sand in a semi-gloss. This done, you can see how much better the coat is and I wasn't too worried about it because I knew I was going to be doing a glaze technique. This was just preventing all of the Bondo from showing through and making it look seamless. While that dried, I went back to my door and cut a bunch of 1x2s to fit in the upper portion and glued them in just with tight bond wood glue. And while I let those dry, I turned my focus back to the console table where I started doing my glaze technique. This was a product from Rust-Oleum and it's a decorative glaze in Java Brown. This was my first time ever using this, so I didn't really know what I was doing, but basically I took a paintbrush and spread it on lightly and then used a paper towel to wipe away the excess. And then I came through with the same paintbrush without adding any more stain to it and just lightly spread it across that area. This I was practicing still, so I think I went a little too light and quickly learned that it's better to go dark at first, wipe it off, and then come back lightly and create those brush strokes like you can see here. And that's what's gonna give the wood look that we're going for. Once I got the hang of it, this actually was a pretty simple process and you can't really mess it up because you can always just wipe it clean and start over. The one thing I will say is to pick a way that you want your grain to appear to go and stick with it because wood will all have grain going one way. So your brush strokes have to go a certain way. Otherwise it kind of just throws it off. And once that was all done, I let it dry and moved my attention back over to the door where I was gonna put the hinges. This Craig Concealed Hinge Jig is such an amazing tool and I highly recommend it to be able to put in the nice hinge hardware and that's all there is to it. They are on and you move on to the other side and repeat the process. And even though this part is easy, actually attaching them to the frame has always given me grief. So I'm not gonna sit here and tell you how to do it because honestly, I can't even tell you, but I just don't give up and I keep trying even when I have to trim the door top and sides to make it work. But after that, then I drilled a hole, added some hardware, tested it out, and yes, I had a victory dance because it worked. I still need to paint and do the glaze on the door, but I got so excited to finally start staging this area. So I got the new kettlebells, put them on the bottom shelf, a couple slam balls to go above them. And then the last request from my parents were a dumbbell set and we're still waiting on a couple more to come in the mail. Once those were all in place and my shelves still are holding up, I moved on to the top. And for now, I am adding this leftover wallpaper that I have had from Tim Paper, and it's a grass cloth. It's actually really sturdy. It's a peel and stick, so they can always remove it. But I figured I would go ahead and just use it since it's not costing any money and it'll give it a clean look for now. And it happens to match perfectly with the next project in this room. Do I think it'll hold up? Probably not. Is it probably gonna rip when somebody throws a weight on it? Yeah, but it's okay. And lastly, we finally got this fridge stocked up and here it is. I am so happy how this turned out and I love this wood technique. Everything looks super modern and even this grass cloth actually looks really good. So I hope it does hold up. This is a perfect space with everything my parents need and this central vac is finally hidden. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Nailgun Nelly and don't forget to subscribe and like below. See you next time.